Hi, my name is John Dickinson. I'm the project technical lead for OpenStack Swift, and today I'm going to give you an overview of how Swift works and the parts that make it up and what it looks like as part of a full deployment in production uh, to solve real world use cases. Uh, just as a little bit of background, Swift was one of the two founding projects of uh, OpenStack. Uh, it was originally open sourced back in 2010 and uh, is the engine that drives uh, major cloud, uh, large scale cloud service providers right now, uh, including people like Rack Space, HP, uh, Softlayer, who was recently acquired by IBM, um, Cree Telecom, Internap, and others all over the world. It's also used in quite a few different uh, private cloud deployments uh, in order to store large amounts of static content that can grow without bounds. Swift is perfect for uh, serving uh, data that is large scale, can uh, requires extremely high availability, and demands high concurrency across the entire data set. So let's get started about how Swift works. They're basically two parts that make up Swift. On the front end, you've got a proxy server. The proxy server accepts all the requests from the uh, end user and is responsible for implementing the API that Swift provides. The other thing that the proxy server does is make sure that uh, it, uh, all of the communication with the backend storage nodes uh, is, is done correctly. So the other part of Swift are storage nodes. The proxy uh, coordinates the communication with the, uh, with the appropriate storage nodes and ensures that the client uh, gets the proper responses back. Uh, just a little note about the Swift API. It's uh, a REST-based API, so it's all completely based on H standard HTTP verbs and response codes. So in this case, if a, a customer is going to, uh, or a user is going to uh, send data to be written into Swift, they may do a put request for a particular object. This object will go to the proxy server. The proxy server will choose which ones of the storage nodes that it needs to talk to. In reality, you've got a whole lot of storage nodes and probably multiple proxy servers in a, uh, in a, in a deployment. I'll get to those uh, how that works in just a little bit. The proxy server then communicates with the appropriate storage nodes and uh, synchronizes uh, or ensures that the object is written down, uh, is sent to those nodes. The storage node is responsible for actually durably storing it on disk and then uh, ensuring and then sending re a response back to the proxy server. So in this way, the um, when you've got a all your drives connected to uh, the storage nodes. Uh, the object is sent to the proxy server, then goes to the storage node, and uh, which then writes it durably back down to the disk. Swift is a replicated-based system, and uh, what that means is that uh, all the data inside of it will be stored uh, multiple times to assure very high availability and durability. By default, we recommend that you use three replicas, which means that then uh, three, uh, the proxies will be talking to three different storage nodes. And uh, the client will never get uh, a successful uh, response to a write request unless at least a majority of these have been successfully written down to disk. This gives you the confidence of uh, having very high durability in your system. On the back end, the storage nodes are communicating with one another to ensure that the data is uh, correct and ensure that data is in the right place. Um, if, for example, this hard drive were to die, which is something that is very common in, in real-world deployments, uh, hard drives fail, uh, the other storage nodes, the entire rest of the cluster, will then uh, participate in ensuring that the data that was stored on this drive is automatically replicated off onto another hard drive. So in this case, it may be that uh, it will be written over here, and so you will still have your full three durable copies of your data in your system. The really great thing about this modular design in Swift is that you can, uh, if you need more, you can add more. So if you need to expand the uh, end user throughput and uh, the actual amount of connections you're able to support, you can add, you can expand out proxy servers. If you need to uh, increase the number of, uh, the amount of overall storage you have provisioned in your cluster because you're running out of space or something, you can add new storage nodes. And you can adjust these to match your real world use case. So if you have something that is dem demanding very high throughput but not, but relatively not a lot of storage, then you can maybe get a little heavier on proxy nodes. If, however, you want to do 
uh, a very cheap and deep storage. You may just have a few proxy nodes, but need to have an enormous number of storage nodes uh, and associated hard drives so you can store all of your data. Uh, Swift gives you the flexibility to do this. So there's two, um, well, the, the, the one other thing I want to uh, talk about with Swift is about how it chooses where to place the data. Uh, the Swift uses a concept uh, called a ring uh, to choose the, uh, to, to place the data. And what happens is that when a request comes in, uh, we look uh, for, let's say, some object. We then can look up in the ring where the, uh, wh what appropriate storage nodes uh, are responsible for this data. And they, these nodes are chosen such that the, uh, they are in isolated failure domains. So the way we, uh, we organize things is based on first region, then zone, then server, and then drive. So we can ensure that all three replicas are going to be on different drives, and if possible, if there's more than one server in the system, you're going to be on multiple servers. If there are more than one availability zone, for example, a rack or a, or a DC room or a um, utility power provider or something like that, uh, within, a, within a data center, uh, if you have more than one of these, we will ensure that your replicas are spread across all of those. And then finally, uh, regions. And regions are a new concept that have been introduced uh, fairly recently into Swift. Uh, Swift now supports the ability to do global clusters, which means that you can have a globally distributed cluster that is treated as one logical Swift endpoint. So you can have a deployment on the East Coast and on the West Coast and treat those as one endpoint. And this gives you very good uh, durability and, for example, a disaster recovery sort of scenario, but it also can give you very good availability if you have users accessing it from different lo uh, locations, they can, go, they can preferentially go to the one that is close to them and get uh, higher throughput because you can have uh, lower network latency. So that's a kind of that's a very high level overview of how Swift works. Uh, there's a lot of detail on there. If you'd like to get more information, uh, go to openstack.org. We have all of our docs there. Um, also, feel free to check out SwiftStack. We make uh, running Swift easy and uh, uh, help you integrate and monitor and manage your your uh, Swift clusters in production. Thank you very much.